Hello guys, today we are going to take a look at an alternative motor driver. So, as you know, we use the TB6612FNG motor driver in most of our uh, RC builds. And that's because it's a dual motor driver and usually we're trying to do something like a software differential or we want to drive like a loader or something like that. But sometimes you know that you just want to drive a single motor. And what we're going to take a look at now is a single motor driver chip. That's fairly cheap, so let's take a look and see what we're working with. Well, what I did for this really was just go to, I think it was LCSC was the website, and I just went for what is the cheapest motor drivers that we could get. Basically, this one was about seven cent, so I went for that, and I've got a few other motor drivers that we're gonna take a look at. And basically, we're just gonna see is there an alternative to the TB6612 FNG that might uh, work well in different circumstances? So what we're looking at today is the TC118SS and that is coming from Shenzhen Fine Made Electronics Group Company Limited. As you can probably guess uh, my Mandarin isn't uh, fantastic but it doesn't really matter. We have a diagram here so NC means no contact that's the same whatever language you're looking at in a and in b so that's obviously our direction controls vdd is going to be our supply voltage we have two grounds here and then we have out a and out b so out a and out b are going to be the connection to our motor that's fairly obvious in a and in b are going to be our inputs that control the direction so usually if it's high, actually it'll be down here somewhere. So, yeah. So if, if they're both low, then I'd imagine high Z means high impedance. So that's like putting a brake on the motor. If one's high, one's low, it's gonna drive that output high, that output low, and the motor will go one direction, switch the inputs, and that switches the outputs, it goes the other direction. But the two of them high, and the both go low. So I'm not sure that might mean it free wheels and this means it's like a brake but uh, it doesn't really matter too much for us usually the gearbox is so uh, large compared to the motor on our models that um, it's not going to free wheel anyway if we go down a little bit further has a recommended circuit is nothing too surprising so a couple of uh, smoothing capacitors on the supply voltage that's pretty normal um, it's maybe a little bit larger than we usually put on ours. We usually have 10 microfarads and 100 nanofarads. But nothing major there. They have a couple of capacitors on the motor side as well. So that could be something we could add. I'm not sure if that is essential. It certainly wouldn't do any harm. We've seen with the uh, that 128 John Deere model that we looked at that noise can be a big problem. So maybe that would help with something like that uh, again we don't know what the text means but we can see like here's the supply voltage 2.4 to 7.2 so our lipo batteries at 4.2 volts would be no problem we wouldn't want to use a 7.4 volt lipo because the when you charge a 7.4 volt lipo it's up over 8 volts so that would damage the chip whereas the tb6612 fng can handle that definitely stick to the single cell lipo the current then uh, 1.2 amps so i guess that's probably peak i'm not sure if it's a continuous doesn't really matter we're not really going to be going that high with an n20 motor anyway um but it's it's good to know that 1.2 amps is the max uh, that, that's the peak there and uh, that'll be a uh, current output peak current output continuous so you could have a peak of two amps when you initially start your motor and then when it's running you want to keep it on the 1.2 so that's how that works the rest of it's not terribly important to us so we know what pins we need we know the limits of our voltage and we know the limits of our current so there's a lot of text here but we don't really need to understand it even we even have a diagram that's pretty clear now one important thing to note here is are we going to be able to get speed control from this chip can we pulse width modulate input a or input b similarly an issue we have here is 
although we're saving pins so if we took the tb6612 fng that we usually use that takes six inputs four of them for directional control and two of them for pwm but that chip drives two motors so that's one pin for pwm and two standard pins uh, for directional control when you're using the tv6612 fng for driving a motor so that means to drive a single motor you only need one pwm pin and you're kind of limited in how many pwm pins you have available so it's kind of better to use less pwms and use more standards but in this instance we need to use two pwm pins because we need pwm for both directions we need to be able to pulse this pin high to move one direction and pulse this one high to move the other direction although possibly what we could do is have one of these as a standard output so let's say this one is constant high so to go one direction you would pulse from high to low and then you switch it around but it'll be a little bit trickier to do that in software okay well here's our chip now soldered to this little board uh, this is a 1.27 millimeter spaced board so uh, the pin spacing for this uh, chip just happens to match that so I just soldered it on there put a little bit of header and connected it to these wires so our pin out we have our uh, no contact pin here it's just plugged into the board just to, to keep it in one place we have our out A and out B going to our motor uh, just a, a CQ motor nothing special there um, we have our in A and in B just sitting in the uh, ground at the minute we have our VDD pin our supply voltage and our two grounds so that's everything wired up so if we give it a bit of power so this is uh, just given 5 volts on this rail here and nothing's happening, the motor's not spinning yet so we take one of our inputs move it to the positive rail and you can see there that the motor is spinning clockwise so we'll take the other one pin that's in ground move it to positive and it stops so as long as the two input pins are at the same voltage the motor won't spin now if we move the first pin back to ground the motor should go anti-clockwise and straight away it's spinning anti-clockwise so that's what we expected and the next thing to do is hook it up to a microchip and see how that works to test this out with a microcontroller we're going to use the version 4.1 board so that's basically an arduino that's running an uh, 8 megahertz internal oscillator and i have taken the scania uh, code because that already runs on the 4.1 board and all i've done is uh, it, it's pretty much the same i changed the id to one just so it was the first one to come up uh, i've added this section I, I got rid of all the pin controls because we're not actually controlling anything I've just added two pin settings during the setup to make sure our two outputs are set as outputs and then then after we've received the signal from the controller buff 2 is the drive value that usually goes to set the motors so I've taken that value and set it to this int called drive val I have another int here for the PWM value so if the signal from our controller is less than 120 we're going to map the drive val uh, to or between 0 and 255 for the pwm value so as we pull the joystick back from 120 back to 0 we are going to increase the pwm from 0 to 255 so that's from 0 to the positive voltage the 5 volts and we're only doing that on pin 3 because that is a hardware PWM pin 2 is just a normal output so we've it set to low so while one pin is low the other is getting increasingly uh, higher voltage until it's at 5 volts and you're going full speed with your motor on the other hand if the drive val was above 135 we're going to map it from 135 to 255 and we're going to map that to 
255 to 0. So in this instance we set the other pin to high so when both pins are high the motor doesn't move. So that's why we're starting high, we're starting at 255 and this time we're going back to ground, we're reversing the voltage so we're going to incrementally go down towards ground as we push the joystick forward. If you remember from our test a second ago, we either have to have two highs or two lows to be uh, to stop moving. So when you're moving your joystick value, in this instance you would need to be two high values to not move and in this instance you need to be two low values to not move. So that's your, your starting point at each time you increment away from the the same level with the two input pins and when the joystick's in the center so when the value is between 120 and 135 we just set the two of them low so in this case the digital output you just tell it to be low and for the PWM you set the PWM uh, to zero and that's all we need to do for the code so let's switch over to the wiring again and see how it works Okay, here's our version 4.1 board hooked up. So we have our power, we have our ground, uh, that power is on the raw input. Then we have our pin uh, 2 and pin 3. So pin 3 is a PWM pin and as you've seen in the code, that's the way we have it set up. So if I give this power, we have signal, you can see the little symbol there is full. So if I push the joystick forward, now we have speed control. So absolutely nothing wrong with this motor driver from a PWM perspective. So that's working pretty perfectly there. We have uh, no smoothing capacitors or anything on it at the minute. Uh, but this motor wouldn't be drawing a huge amount of current, so that's not really an issue for us. There would be some smoothing on this power supply itself, but uh, on the anywhere close to the motor driver, there's nothing. So that seems to work pretty good. It's a very small uh, motor driver chip, and we had clear smooth uh, PWM control with our well with our microcontroller here. I have a few more chips to test out in addition to this one, so. I think maybe there's two or three more single motor driver chips so we'll give them all a try and see what's best but we could use something like this to make a single motor driver uh, chip for any application where you we're only going to have a single motor it mightn't be a drive motor it could be a, a motor in a trailer for a linear actuator to tip the trailer something like that so there's a, a good few applications where you might want something like this so that's all there is to say about that chip really, I uh, hope you liked the video, if you did don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to uh, subscribe and get the bell on so you'll get notifications when we do the next video on the next uh, motor driver chip. But for now that's all I can say about this chip so thanks very much for watching.